Hi friends! Oppenheimer, this blockbuster movie, is about a man who made the atomic bomb, which killed 200,000 innocent Japanese citizens. So let me tell you about the life of this miracle man, Mr. Yamaguchi, who is the only known survivor of two of Oppenheimer's atomic bombs. And he lived until he was 93 years old, and he was relatively healthy throughout most of his life. Was he a mutant? I don't think so. But his story is incredible and speaks volumes of not only his will to survive, but the will of the human body to repair. And you may not know this, but you are exposed to background radiation on a daily basis in the air, in your food, and in your water. Now, if you had any x-rays or CT scans, then you are exposed to even more radiation. I order these tests all the time. They're considered relatively safe, but we know that four CT scans can significantly increase the cancer risk in a child. Ultrasounds and MRIs are definitely much safer, but sometimes CT scans, they give us better imaging results. The more CT scans you get, the higher the radiation dose and the higher your risk of cancers. Or is it? This man clearly got at least 7,000 times the amount of radiation you would get from one single CT scan. A single CT scan is a dose equivalent to about 20 months of background radiation. So he got nuked twice. So 7,000 times two is 14,000 times 20 months is 280,000 months of radiation. And if we divide that by 365 days, he got 767 years worth of radiation with those two atomic bombs. Clearly atomic bombs are dangerous, but Mr. Yamaguchi lived until he was 93 years old and he wasn't in a shelter with the first bomb, which was dropped on August the 6th, 1945, the day Mr. Yamaguchi was eagerly leaving Hiroshima to see his family after being away for three months. That morning at 8.15, as he made a final stroll through Mitsubishi's shipyard, he heard the drone of an aircraft and looked up and saw an American B-29 bomber dropping a small object connected to a parachute. Suddenly, he saw a bright flash of light. And as an engineer, he recognized that power in explosive magnesium and knew to dive into a ditch right before the ear piercing bomb. That violent explosion lifted his horizontal body from the ground and spun it around like a toy spinning top and thrusted him into a potato patch. He was less than two miles from ground zero. That is the power of Oppenheimer's atomic bomb, which is now in the hands of nine countries around the world. Now, if you didn't already know, in the event of the next atomic bomb, finding shelter is the first thing you must do. Being so close to the epicenter and outdoors, Mr. Yamaguchi suffered burns to his face and his forearms. But radiation that is released can travel four to five miles in the direction of the wind. So if you are downstream, even if you're not at ground zero, you have at most three hours to find shelter depending on the wind speed. Everything that radiation touches will be radioactive from the dust in the air to the dirt and plants and animals on the ground. When Mr. Yamaguchi finally came to, everything was dark and eerily silent because his eardrums got ruptured. This actually left him permanently hearing impaired. Now that's pretty minor compared to the 80,000 people who instantly died and he didn't know it, but he was actually burned and bleeding on the outside. But soon enough, he would have internal bleeding. This caused him to be anemic. And of course, his lifetime risk of getting cancers, such as thyroid cancer, lymphoma, leukemia, and GI cancers all shot up. By the way, in case you're wondering, he died of stomach cancer at the age of 93. People suspect it was related to his atomic bomb exposures, but this was like 65 years earlier, which is pretty darn good considering that the average American man doesn't make it past 73. So how does a man who survived two nuclear bombs live longer? Obviously there are toxins in your environment that's not radiation. Radiation is no joke. You can ask any patient who has received radiation treatment for their cancers, which localizes radiation to only um, one one hundredth of the radiation Mr. Yamaguchi experienced from the first bomb. Amazingly, he was able to catch the next train the next morning to go home. 
Guess where he lived? He lived in Nagasaki, but his family was unable to recognize him. And his mom actually accused him of being a demon because of his burns. On August 9th, despite not feeling well, his employer asked him to show up at work and he did. This was literally two days later. How many of you have called in sick for less severe issues? This man's ethics was incredible. And in the middle of explaining his incredible journey to his colleagues, he saw another flash of light and instantly ducked. He again was two miles from ground zero. What luck, because he was now inside the office building and survived. But his bandages burned off and he suffered more radiation poisoning and radiation burns. It didn't help that he went outside. Now the fallout of radiation is most intense within the first 24 hours. And what he should have done was to stay away from windows, run to the basement and remove his clothes and shower. But he had his young family in mind. So he instinctively rushed home, but found it in rubbles. And by the grace of God, his wife and son were shopping for burn ointment at the shopping center and that's how they survived. However, it wasn't true for the rest of his fellow citizens. Thousands of people died instantly and over the coming months. Over 90% of Japanese doctors and nurses died instantly or developed injuries and radiation poisoning. They couldn't help their patients. Interestingly, about one and a quarter miles away from Nagasaki's epicenter, a small tuberculosis hospital had 20 employees who all survived and they also didn't get acute radiation poisoning. Dr. Tachichiro Azuki, I hope I'm saying the name right, believed it was due to the fact that they ate cups of wasaki miso soup, basically miso with wakame seaweed daily. Several decades later in 1972, Japanese scientists like Morishita Kenichiro, I hope that's right, discovered diploninic acid, which is produced by miso and natto microorganisms that binds to heavy metals. And since then, other studies have shown that miso fed mice have gut protection against radiation. But the miso needed to be in the mice's diet before exposure to radiation. However, keeping the mice on a miso diet reduced their risk of colon cancers. Of course, these studies can't be replicated in humans. However, we know that the rate of colon cancers are rising in young Americans, and they're not even exposed to abnormal doses of radiation. But nor do they eat miso or soy. And we know there's a direct link between diet and cancers. Miso is essentially fermented soybean. And in 1991, it was shown that two cups of miso daily reduces the risk of colon cancer. Now, some publication also noticed a reduction in rectal cancers. And since then, other studies around the world have shown soy consumption to be protective against many other cancers. Why is miso so special? Well, it's fermented with fungi and bacteria that make beneficial compounds like the diploclinic acid but to help their own survival against radiation. Isn't it amazing how nature has a solution to many things? We just need to find it. Miso is very nutritious and also contains all the essential amino acids and vitamins such as B1, B2, and B3, which are all necessary to promote healing. Now eating wakame seaweed is also important. Seaweed and sea vegetables are high in iodine and iodine deficiency already affects 45% of the world's population. That's billions of people. On an uneventful day, you need iodine to have a healthy thyroid and you need a healthy thyroid to live. So unless you're eating seafood, use iodinized salt, take an iodine supplement or drink dairy milk, you are likely iodine deficient. Now in the event of a radiation catastrophe, having that iodine in your system it's super important to protect your thyroid, especially for children against thyroid cancer. And in fact, in the States, instead of telling people to eat sea vegetables, they actually recommend potassium iodine in the case of radiation emergencies. Another common and cheap ingredient is to have sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, which is used medically to alkalinize your urine to a pH of eight to nine against radiation poisoning. And it's literally on the NIH website. But radiation surrounds you on an everyday basis, although a low level, but nevertheless, it's in your water and in your food. And some radioactivity like uranium is 70% cleared by your kidneys. Seems like a good idea, especially because it reduces kidney stones. Now you can simply do this by eating more vegetables. A urine pH of 6.8 is healthy. And if you're eating 
the wrong diet, you probably have an acidic urine. If you want to get really nerdy about it, order some urine pH test strips off the internet and dip your urine. Another common food that millions of people eat around the world is turmeric. And it's been shown to reduce radiation-induced skin injury for breast cancer patients. Six grams of curcumin divided into three doses were taken daily in the study. Dr. Oppenheimer invented the nuclear bomb. And Mr. Yamaguchi and the other survivors of that horrible weapon have shown our leaders that they need to keep these weapons locked. These incredible stories have shown the resilience of not only the human mind, but the human body and the nourishing power of nature. Now, if you want to learn more about how to power your body with the right food, check out this next video.